My goal was not to be 100% carnivore for life, it was to heal. Hello my friends, it's been a while since I've made a video and I've missed being here on YouTube. I thought that I would just update you guys on how things are going and just kind of share about some of the changes that I've made with my diet this year and just my progress with my recovery from chronic illness. So if you're new here, welcome. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sharing my journey from years of severe chronic illness to healing. So when I was at my sickest, I was essentially bed bound and severely, severely ill, severe fatigue, severe pain, severe neuro neurological symptoms. I was diagnosed with so many chronic illnesses, some of them being Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, dysautonomia or POTS, gastroparesis, Chiari malformation, chronic Lyme disease, <laughs> the list just kind of goes on. And for years I went the Western medicine route, and I tried all sorts of treatments, saw uh, top doctors, I was even recommended and had major neurosurgeries, but I continued just to get sicker and sicker. And a couple of years ago, I came across the carnivore diet, and I decided to try it, and it brought me a lot of healing. It hasn't been the only thing that I've been doing to heal. Another really important part of my recovery has been nervous system regulation and brain retraining. And I share a lot about that on my Instagram account, at ribeyereach, so make sure to follow along there. I am much more consistent with posting on Instagram at this point, but hoping to be more consistent on YouTube here soon. But in this video, I kind of just wanted to focus on some of my diet changes and why I'm not carnivore anymore, as you probably saw in the title of the video. Anyways, after about a year and a half of doing a strict carnivore diet, I really just felt like it wasn't the right thing for me anymore. And I know a lot of people kind of transition from a strict carnivore diet because they want more variety. That wasn't the case for me. I just really felt like it, it wasn't the right way for me to eat anymore. And I'm still eating mostly carnivore, like to the outside world, not the carnivore community. They probably would still see me as carnivore. I would say I'm probably still about 90% carnivore. I mostly eat meat and animal products, meat, eggs, dairy, but to the carnivore community, I'm very much not carnivore and that's totally okay with me. I would say I'm doing more of an animal-based diet approach now, so I've added in some fruit, I've added in some organic grains, but whenever I do have those carbs, I make sure to pair them with lots of high quality animal protein. And for me, that's actually been helpful. And so I guess the reason why I'm sharing this is because I think there's really no one size fits all when it comes to diet. And for me, the carnivore diet was the right choice for all that time, but just because a diet like helped you in your healing journey doesn't mean it's the right diet for you for the rest of your life. And when I started the carnivore diet, my goal was not to be 100% carnivore for life, it was to heal. And as we heal, our bodies can have different needs at different times, and that's okay. And for me, I just felt really strongly that I needed to try to introduce other foods. And it's been going really, really well. I haven't had any sort of food reactions, and I think a lot of that is due to all of the intensive brain retraining and nervous system work that I've done. I know some people probably won't like that I'm not carnivore anymore, and that's totally okay. I'm not here to please everybody, but just to do what's best for me and my health. And I'm not trying to convince people to not do carnivore, and I'm not trying to convince people to do carnivore. I'm just trying to share the message that healing is possible and that food is medicine. It's so, so important. Sometimes it feels like in the carnivore community, if something goes wrong or if somebody hits a wall with carnivore or isn't seeing healing or progress, that they aren't carnivoring hard enough or that they're not doing it right. And I just, that's not the way I see it. I think that animal-based foods, protein and fat, are essential for optimal health, but I don't think that being strict carnivore is essential for optimal health. And for some, it may they may do better with a more animal-based style. I definitely think it's really good to be able to tolerate and feel good eating some other foods and not have to be so strict. But if you're doing a strict carnivore diet and you love it and you feel great, then by all means continue. I think it's it's a good way of eating and I think it's way, way better than the standard American diet. But I think it's important to question, like, do we really know if carnivore is the best diet for every single human? 
I, I'm just not really sure. There are a lot of other ancestral foods like fermented foods and properly prepared grains that humans have been eating for a really long time. And so that's why I really enjoy the Weston A. Price style approach because they focus on animal-based foods as being the main source of nutrition, but they also see value in other foods like fermented foods or sourdough bread or whatever it is. I haven't tried sourdough bread yet. I'm still gluten-free, but I guess my point is I think it's important to stay open-minded about nutrition. And when I was kind of really in all of the carnivore rabbit holes, I watched all the podcasts and, and just spent so much time researching about carnivore and I became really passionate about it. And in a way, I felt like carnivore became sort of a part of my identity and I wanted to continue doing carnivore. I really wanted it to be my long-term <laughs> way of eating, but it just didn't feel right. And that's really what I tell people when they ask why I stopped a strict carnivore diet is that it just, it didn't feel right for me anymore. And of course I'm still focusing on animal-based foods as being the majority of my nutrition, but I have seen benefits from adding in things like fruits. And I was severely deficient in vitamin C, and for a while there was supplementing with a just like a whole food vitamin C pill, but now I've been adding in fruit, and I think that's been helpful for me. That's kind of the update. No longer strict carnivore. I just kind of wanted to give some background on that before I went into what I eat videos again so that you guys would kind of know why it is that I'm not doing a strict carnivore diet anymore. I, in some ways, have enjoyed adding in some other things and some other flavors, but in other ways I do miss like the simplicity of carnivore, and like I said before, I do almost wish that that was the right diet for me long term just because of how simple it is. It, it's more complicated to make recipes when you're adding in all sorts of like onions and garlic and herbs, but it's all good. I'm just so grateful for nourishing foods and for the progress I've made in, in my healing and for how changing my diet has truly changed my life. And that's why I'm sharing my story. And as for a health update, things are going really well. I physically have been continuing to improve throughout this year and we've done some traveling. We went to Norway. We went out of the country for the first time since I got sick, so probably seven or eight years. and. We went hiking a lot. I went on a 12 mile hike and overall my body handled it pretty well. For me this year has really just been figuring out how to get back into normal life again. And it's been challenging, but it's been exciting and it's the good kind of challenge and the good kind of hard. So hopefully more videos are to come very soon. But before I end this video, I wanna show you guys what I got for my birthday. Say hello to Wednesday. I named her after Wednesday Adams. <laughs> so I got one black chick and three golden chicks. So the other three chicks are the three musketeers. My sister surprised me with these cute little chicks for my birthday. She also surprised my husband Jake. He didn't know about it. So I'm trying to convince him to let me keep them here on our property. It's okay. It's okay. She always calms down after I hold her for a little bit. Anyway, my sister offered to keep them in her coop, but I really am hoping that we can get one of our own for our property so that we can just have fresh eggs. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.